Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode 26 of Studio Time with Rios. So I got some exciting news for you guys today. In case you miss it, I just dropped a brand new song called I Told You. What's really cool about this one is I made the core idea for it in an episode of Studio Time with Rios. I believe it was episode 18 and now it's released. I can't wait to play this one live. I really love it and I hope you guys do too. So go check it out on all your favorite streaming platforms. And without further ado, I'm gonna tell you guys what we're about to do. Let's get right into it. I had the idea today to make a future rave remix of I Told You. I know I Told You is already kind of a dark club energetic record, but it's definitely more Ryo-C, more progressive slash big room-esque. Um, and I thought it'd be really cool to have a future rave version as well. So I just want to mess around today with some future rave ideas, kind of remix or make a club mix or future rave mix, whatever you want to call it, of I Told You. So... What are we looking at here? Well, I did bring the acapella for I Told You into this project. And I think we're just going to get jiggy, folks. I think we should just get right into it. Today, I want to start with the break. I want to sort of build all that future rave energy, get it into a nice, crazy buildup, and then into a drop. I think that'll be a really cool idea. I don't know. Personally, today, I'm just feeling that vibe. So what do we got to do when we're making future rave? All right. Well, first things first, we need that re-space for the break, right? And we're gonna just have it droning on the one root note of the track, which, shit, I probably should have figured this out prior. I'm pretty sure this track is in G minor. I'm pretty sure. So if that's the case, I have a re-space here pulled up and we're gonna put this bad boy on G. Very simple. Now the other thing we have to consider is the vocal arrangement. The vocal arrangement is a bit different in the second half of the track. It's just repeating twice over. And I think that's what I wanna do for the first break in the future rave version. So let's bring this over here. There we go. We're already getting some vibes going. So next up, what's super important in these future rave breaks is a really nice atmosphere sound. One of my favorite ways to do this is kind of pick a, a cool trippy sound and then just go absolutely rogue with processing. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let's go to Analog Lab. Oh, this is kind of cool. I like to do pulsing drones. We'll make the MIDI look something like that. All right, so now for the processing. Well, first, I definitely want to just add so much reverb and all that crazy stuff to it. Um, let's do that first. Let's do super massive, and let's try maybe this preset first. Already like that direction. That sounds good. Now let's also double down on the space and let's get some delay going. Um, I'm going to also opt for DST. I want to do a little bit of multiband distortion here, particularly in the high mids. Maybe we'll take down the low mids. Already sounding really cool. We could play around this further. We could try like origin and see if that does anything cool for us here. Let's play it with the bass and the vocal quick. Okay, so you know what? A pulsing drone isn't sounding the way I want. I gotta bounce this into audio because I do like the tail, but I do not like that initial transient from the pluck sound. Yeah, see, this is perfect. I could just use this tail here. Now we just gotta enable generic here so we don't get any weird clicking sounds. Let's get this in the mixer. And then I also wanted to add OTT to this, squeeze it a little bit, add a bit of brightness. So this is a really cool idea already. This is kind of like the foundation that we're gonna need. I do wanna try out one more drone sound. I want it to be slightly more energetic. Maybe we can go for like a super saw or something. That way we get more high end. All right, let's copy the drone processing that we did initially and copy it over here. All right, that's kind of cool. Wrong note though. And this thing is going on for eternity, holy shit. So G5 or G4? Probably G4. And let's see if we can blend this in, see what it sounds like. So 
So that's cool. You can see what it's doing, right? This one is definitely more high mid slash high focused. So it's adding a lot of energy here with this initial drone. That's perfect. So the reason I wanted to do the second part of the vocal in the first part of this future rave idea was because I thought it might sound cool if we have a more melodic section right here. So we can introduce some change in the bass line, maybe some really cool pads or something, and then also start bringing in that synth filtered. And then like right here, we can actually have the synth like full blast, how they always do in the in the future rave tracks. Another really, actually, time out, time out what I gotta do. This thing is gonna keep going on for eternity. I gotta bounce this into audio. Let's consolidate this track. Cool, now we got the drone consolidated. Okay, cool. Now, before we add more elements, I just had the idea to pitch down the re-space here leading into that melodic section, do like a mini tape stop. So let's go ahead and get that in now. Just create a quick automation clip and then we'll just pitch it down for like the last two beats or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can make this go to like D sharp or something. The bass lines and chord progressions are usually like two bars long before each change. So let's do that. So we're going to either end off on C or A sharp. It's really important, in my opinion, that we get the future rave vibe going. Let's bring in some synths, um, and let's start trying to create a melody that will work with basically the rest of these uh, sounds here. To start, we can just pick a super simple future rave sound. And let's start playing around with some melodies. Let's start jamming. Okay, so my idea here is to just have the melody um, basically staying the same, just keep progressing, and then I'm moving the bass line of the notes to match the bass line that's currently playing in the track. So this would be G. Let's cut out this part of the vocal, drag this over. It's basically the same part, I just lowered it for when the big synths come in in the original track. So we'll just do that here. Enable generic so we don't get any weird clicking. And then at this point, um, we can take the pre-drop vocal. Let's put it on another track. For now, we'll just cut it. And then here it would drop. Now for this drop idea, initially coming into today's session, I thought it'd be really cool to have like a massive bouncy bass. That's one of my favorite things about Future Rave is when they're so groovy and it's just just massive power in the low end. So that's gonna be like my priority and then picking the right melody to match that bass line is gonna be a little bit later on. So of course we first need to get the kick going and then we need to get that massive bass going that I'm talking about. I wanna go for a really, really clean kick. Let me see if I have one in my own sample pack and then if not, we can go elsewhere. All right, now the baseline. What if we do idea one? And what I wanna do is take this MIDI and basically make a baseline using this rhythm. So. Let's put everything on G4 for right now. That's cool. That sounds better like this. Alright, the Diablo is doing way too much. Let's try a different preset quick and or just get rid of it. That's sick. 
I like that. Let me throw a quick stereo imager on this, make sure that everything is in order. Okay, I think we found our idea, folks. After all that messing around, I'm gonna shorten that a lot, but uh, yeah, we spent some time trying to find the right idea, and we just did. So let's let's build off this quick while the while the idea is fresh. Let's get rid of all this. Absolutely, absolutely, folks. That is what I'm talking about. I wonder if we keep the drone going. That might sound cool as well. Hold your horses, folks. Ooh, okay, so if we do a little moment, that'll sound sick. Basically, what my shit impression was, was that of an exhaust. So we're gonna go ahead and get an exhaust in there right now. Wow, I am faded. This whole time I put this, I'm like, why does it sound weird? Like there's not sidechain on. Even though I added this automation clip here, dude, the sidechain was just off the whole time. That'll do it. All right. All right, now what about this tom? Let's revisit this idea. Um, we can just mimic the bass, honestly. So I'm basically just getting rid of all the notes on the tom right now that are clashing with the kick. Because I don't want to sidechain it, but I obviously don't want it to clash with the kick either. So now we got the main hits that we're going to need. Sweet, okay. Let me label, let's organize a tad. Let's get this to be the exhaust. We're gonna need um, some more downlifters and shit for sure, but for right now, this is cool. I reckon that we get some lead processing going first before moving on to some of the details. Let's just make this a bit better. So mainly what I wanna do is add my own lead reverb send and uh, delay send. Okay, so for the verb, we're gonna go for arts acoustic. And then for the delay, let's do, we could try Valhalla delay, and then if not, we'll probably do H delay instead, but let's see. A Little bit of diffusion here. When I made this melody before, I went up on the bass line here, um, and I just heard it, and it might sound cool if we introduce a little bit of bass change here. Move that to A sharp. And then we'll do C, but I'll probably cut out the bass here, to be honest. Sweet. All right, let's keep this drop moving and grooving, yo. We need some shakers for the second half of the drop. Now, another thing that I like to do in these future rave tracks is have a hi-hat with a shit ton of reverb. I call it the air hat. It gives it that nice arena effect. And I actually think I put it in a Patreon pack. Which one was it? Oh, this one. Okay. So, yeah, you can hear just the sample here. You know, it's got that future rave vibe. So, let's put this in here. Sync it to 128. Make this mono. Let's see what this sounds like. All right, next up, I want to go ahead and get more effects going in this drop. The exhaust is it's there. It's doing its thing, but it definitely needs, like, bigger white noise downlifters and probably a crowd effect or something like that. So let's get that in right now. All right, so this is the winner here. I like what this downlifter is doing. Now, like I mentioned, I also want to get a crowd texture.
These effects are sounding better now. Now it's probably time I do some processing on the leads. This lead already sounds really good straight out of Serum, but I can make it fit the mix a bit better. Mainly, it's just a little too dull. I want it to be a little brighter, a little biteier. <laughs> I want it to have more bite. Uh, novelty character is great for that. Let's try a few of these out. Also get an EQ on this synth real quick. I'm gonna cut out some of the lows. I wanna try adding a clipper or a limiter, I'm not sure yet. Um, just to kind of squeeze these leads a little bit more. Let's try a clipper first, we'll do Soft Clip Pro. Add a little bit of saturation, turn the ceiling on. That's sick. All right, this sounds really, really good. I think now the drop just needs a few details to spice it up and make it sound a bit better. Um, and then we have to do the rest of the break and the build. So now let's shift backwards and then we'll make our way towards the drop once again. Okay, so right here, I think we get the enormous brass stabs that are just playing the Reese melody. So maybe try this one. Nice, all right, so then we need a crap ton of reverb and delay as always. I'm just gonna copy over the reverb and delay we used in the drop, but now I'm gonna just mix it in instead of using it on a send. We also need a lot of compression on this, so maybe we'll just do Camel Crusher. Let's get OTT on there as well. All right, let's see how this sounds as a starting point. Okay, the brass doesn't work here, unfortunately. It sounds really cool on its own. Um, we might have to go for the more aggressive, like, saw stabs instead. I think I did I do that in the OG Future Rave project that I did in Studio Time with Riles. I think I did, and I'm not going to know where that sound is, so I can't really use it now. But we can recreate it. All right, so let's put the same processing on it. And let's get some... Wait, that works. It works as a layer, that's for sure. Um, I want like a more noisy layer to go along with this now. Let's try some super saws from Nexus. Sweet. All right. I want to maybe try adding two more melodic elements to this section. Let's try a really dreamy pad, get some chords going. And then I want to try adding like an arp that's based off of the drop melody, maybe like a small pluck sound. Then we can open up the cutoff leading into the big synth section. I have some cool plucks saved. Let's try these. This one kind of gives me future rave vibes. And then super crucial here, let's make the bass line of the melody follow the chord progression. So D sharp, F, G, and then A sharp. Holy guacamole, guys. This idea is massive. <laughs> I did notice while listening back to it just now, I muted the pads, and it actually kind of sounds better. This pluck is really, really sick. I want to 100% automate that cutoff. Yeah, so we could just do that there, nice and easy. Okay. 
Okay, well, I apologize if that just cut abruptly. I forgot that the pool people are coming today. We're changing our pool from a regular to a saltwater pool. So he's doing that right now. And I completely forgot. My bad. All right, but anywho, let's finish this idea. So we're going to need just a basic white noise sweep to bring us to this impact. The sweep is cool, but the pluck is interfering a lot with our vocal now. So I'm going to go ahead out of fruity balance and try to lower this bad boy like so. You can probably reduce the distortion as well. And then of course we need that classic snare roll here. So normally the snare rolls in these future rave buildups are very like housey they remind me of. Yeah, like let's quickly just do a very simple snare build. I like the way that snare roll sounds the best. Now for this build, I want everything to sort of wash out. So I just made some automation clips for the master. What I got here is an endless smile that's going to be doing most of the washing out. Then we have um, Meta Flanger. This is like super popular in future wave buildups to have that sort of flanger effect. And then I'm also going to make everything get a little bit more narrow towards the drop so that when the drop hits, it really feels massive. So we can do something like this here, something like this for the endless smile. And then Meta Flanger will just do like 8% or so. This build has a lot of the foundational elements we need. I think we could probably just use a sweep, riser, or both. Um, so let's go ahead and get that in there. Let's see if this works. The snare is really good. It, it is just a little too short. Let me see if I can get a, a longer snare here to use then. Wait a minute, there's snare rolls already here. Another nice addition right here might be a very small ride. And then, oh, I want to try making a reverse reverb for my drop synth. Boom, boom. Let's reverse it, put it right before the drop. Now, another thing that I want to try right before this pre-drop is a little reverse kick. I think that'll sound cool too. Let's take the same kick, I guess. And we're going to shorten it a bunch. I want to see if we were to take out the kick and Tom when the bass line changes. And we can actually, <coughs> excuse me, wow. We can actually bring back the Reese just for this section, copy the melody, and turn off the side chain on the leads and have like a mini fill thing right in the drop. The last two things I wanted to add here are gonna be some small sweeps or reverse hats throughout the drop to kind of add a little bit more motion, a little bit more movement, and maybe a little riser or something that's taking us out of the drop. Here we go, this hat. All right, so the dirty rev hat sounds awesome. Now for that riser idea for the second half of the drop, we could do a riser or we can just introduce a drone. And I really love the drone that we made today. So I might try that first, let's see. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, I think that could fit if we add some side chain to it. So I'm gonna quickly make a drone group, which I should have done earlier low key, but it's all good. All right, guys, so I think I'm going to call it quits there. Let's take a listen from the top, and let's see what I came up with. I told you.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it. Studio Time with Rios, episode 26, is a wrap. This Use Your Ray version of I Told You sounds really sick. I think I'm going to work on this more and then play it in my live sets with the original back-to-back. -back. I think that'll be really sick. So comment down below if you think I should release this version as well as a VIP mix or club mix, future rave mix, whatever you want to call it. So thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time I upload. If you want the stems to today's episode, any other episode of Studio Time with Rouse, if you want sample packs, if you want a bunch of other goodies, you can go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon. The link for that will be down below in the description. And yeah, guys, go stream. I told you, brand new record out now. Super stoked about it. And yeah, I think that's all I got to say. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video.